Hi there. Thank you for downloading, listening to, and or watching the Lean Into Artcast, the show where a couple of visual storytellers get together, take on various topics that tend to occur when you embark on this uh, journey of communicating with images, communicating visually. We think hard about this stuff, so you will too. My name is Jersey Drozd. I am a cartoonist and a teaching artist. And the other host is... Well, hey, Jersey. I'm Rob Stenzinger, a user experience designer, facilitator. I do coaching and make interactive experiences. Good to see you again, Rob. Good to see you. I hope you had a good holiday break when we had a, a rebroadcast for a week. And now we're back to streaming live and... Um, talking about storytelling topics yeah right on yeah it's uh it's, it's handy to to uh to take a week off now and then i mean uh, a lot of uh, a lot of podcasts we've done float out of our uh, rss in our feed because where we host it only has 100 back um but yeah here we are almost at 300 so it's it's nice to you know pick something up from the archive now and then and and uh present it so whenever we do a, a rebroadcast we do a little bit of a um you know Hey, we're representing this. Here's a little introduction, and that hopefully gives some some context too. It's, um, yeah, we put a lot of hours into this, and I, I think there's plenty of these hours that uh, they have some level of evergreenness. I yeah, I think a lot of our topics. I mean, there's there's only a handful I can think of where it feels like okay, that one doesn't hold up anymore because we were talking about a technology that we don't use anymore right sure like maybe we were RIP talking posterous <laughs> yeah 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 so i was just thinking of that yeah um but as we close out 2019 i noticed that we're we're falling into a pattern of sort of like going back to sort of fundamental topics that we have addressed at various times over the last 294 episodes and like revisiting them in a broad sense again, like we did comics, obviously, we did UX, obviously. And uh, as we close out a year, this is a good opportunity to talk about reflection and goal planning, obviously, i.e. reflection and journaling and learn to or to learn and plan. Because, um, yeah, this is a this is a big deal in your house, right? Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's. Um, a lot of the folks who, who listen to our, our shows and whatnot are pretty into this too. It's, um, uh, you know, and I think it's one of those things where you put something in the world that you care a lot about, you get a lot of utility, you celebrate it, you question it and all that kind of stuff. And other folks show up going like, Hmm, interesting. I like to think about this too. And so, yeah, I mean, reflecting and journaling has been pretty much in the first, like first few episodes of this podcast and certainly covered also on for instance, the Art and Science Punks show, where I, I do that with my um, my partner and and uh, my wife, Kate Shield Stenzinger. And uh, yeah, it's you know we're we're super into that. Yeah, and in, in our in our house especially, and and um, you know it's one of those things where we will be the house that for some reason has a giant um, sticky note on the wall that at a gathering folks might see it, and then <laughs> conversations can come up. And we get used to that because <laughs> yeah, we, we, we do this. We've, we've done that some form of this for almost 20 years now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I visited you in January of 2017, 2018, 2017. I can't remember now. It was, it was, a, it was a few Januaries ago mm -hmm. and the, the big sticky notes were still out and like the girls had, your daughter's had sticky notes out like these giant, like, like cupboard size sticky notes with establishing or declaring what their goals were for the year. <laughs> Which, yeah, I mean, so we, we are, um, you know, and, and we celebrate this in different ways for, for us at different ages. Right. So Kate and I will take weeks dealing with this process and starting to think about it, ramping up and all that kind of stuff. And we'll share a lot more about that in, in this episode and, and uh, probably refer to a couple of our science punks too. And, uh, but, and of course we include our kiddos. It's not that, um, you know, there's a, an intense drill and a certification process to be in their family <laughs> regarding goals and journaling. You're just exposed to it, right? So I'm trying to help inc and include them in the process. Sure, yeah. I mean, kids kids learn that way by mimicking what their parents do too, right? If they see you doing sure. it, they're going to want to do it. I, I didn't. I wasn't. Didn't mean to suggest this became some kind of Dickensian schoolhouse thing where you're walking up and down the aisle <laughs> with a rod. 
<laughs> yeah. More introspection. Think harder. <laughs> five years from now, not two years from now. Five. I'm think. only four. I can't think that far oh, ahead. Like, I've not lived five years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can understand someone getting that impression, though, but... <laughs> Ah, uh, we're so funny the way we think about, uh, uh, well, I, I won't continue that thought. All right, so let's hit some music to get over to the episode proper so that we can, oh, dig deep into thinking about reflecting, journaling, and planning for the year 2020, how we do it. Um, you know, it occurs to me that we are just past a big period of journaling that we celebrate every year called Art Sound Off, and there's an opportunity there to think about what we got from that. Maybe spend like five, ten minutes on that. Like, what 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 are our reflections and re- and um, reactions to having done Art Sound Off as a way to springboard us into thinking about further journaling uh, and and uh, processing that we need to do in order to do our goal planning. So, I like that. I think it's a, okay. yeah, it's a chance to live out a not too complicated example of, um, you know, one of those things of if you're doing reflection from time to time and not digging super deep into the past, it doesn't become as this giant research exercise, which we can talk about later. But like, here we go. Art Sound Off just happened. Art Sound Off is all about celebrating journaling. Um, I'm really curious. So like one, one framing of this, we could take all sorts of different framings. Like when you reflect back on stuff, I'm curious, um, what you do, uh, what I tend to do is do do a couple of categories of like, uh, I want to think of a list of what's what was working, what's not working, and also like, what do I want to celebrate or high fives? Yeah, I think that's a great framework for thinking about it. It's a nice, simple, and I, I'm a big fan of things that come in threes. Um, and it, it, it it's and it's nice and simple and direct, like what works, what didn't work. So what what do you what worked, what didn't work, and what do you want, want to celebrate from your experience with Art Sound Off this year? Uh, I I have a, there's some intertwinedness to it where um, I embrace the challenge this year. There are years where I know, I think I've not quite made all 30 episodes, all 30 mm. posts because of, mm. you know, travel for work, holiday. There's, there's a holiday every time, every November. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're still, uh, you know, in the U.S., we're celebrating the Thanksgiving holiday that typically has logistics around it. So I often don't quite get to 30, but this month I decided I want to do all 30. And that had a certain tension to it because, mm-hmm. yep, still other constraints, other projects, of course, too. And I also chose that I'm going to do these and I want to dig deeper somehow where just go toward... Um, I forget, I don't know how many polytechnic casts I've done, but it's, but it's a few hundred at this point. And I'm like, things, I've got this series of, uh, that became um, practicing user experience for all. Mm-hmm. Because it started out where it's like, all these basics, all these tools, like anyone can use in any discipline. I want to point that out and celebrate it and encourage it. And then it also, then I crossed some, some threshold of like the stuff I want to talk about is like, is that really comfortable for someone starting out? And I thought, not really. You would have to be a, 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 a very quirky bird to, to jump straight into this stuff. So in a way, I'm getting further in the topic. Maybe it's, yeah, anyway, so I'm like, well, it's still practicing user experience for all. So, okay. Um, and, I, and I came up with, with things I really cared, I wanted to talk about, and I bombed it on so many. Like I, w- I would sit down to post with a, with a preface and, a, and an idea, and I would have a strong five, 10, 15 minutes, and then, uh-oh, you know, running out of gas, <laughs> and uh, there's ice on the road, and, and I, 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 I wipe out. And, and I'm like, wow, that's a whole recording out the window. <laughs> no. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Over and over again. So <sighs> I'm proud and happy. I, I dug deep and I would take some of those, dust them off, and then take some notes and, and get some highlights and then re- like record a fresh version of it that actually had a beginning, middle, and end or had like three key points. Like you mentioned, liking things that come in threes. And, you know, that was cool, but it was kind of an expensive development process, right? Where I could have done that more efficiently so it's like 
digging deeper, I feel good about what came out of it. I like the, the, the hodgepodge of journals and content development I did over Art, Art Sound Off. I feel great about that. That worked. The improvising with a, with a deep idea, eh, that didn't work so great because it, it just took that much more effort. So it was a, I found a lot of challenge due to the volume I chose to commit to and the amount of effort it took to reach that. So that's, that's kind of my working, not working and, and, and high five. I feel good about um, high five to me for digging deep and sticking through it and high five to um, I think everyone else in the community is setting an awesome example where they would basically do a handful of posts mm-hmm. and that's probably the way to do it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I, I, I big high fives to them and you. Uh, and yeah, I agree that I think like it's worth thinking about next year maybe taking a sketchbook summer kind of approach where it's like, let's not, let's not even think about every day. Let's think about like, it's just a month where we practice it in certain ways. And we've modeled a lot of different approaches. The leaners have modeled a lot of different approaches, but like the idea of doing something, I mean, the 30 days thing was based on some pre-existing challenges like Inktober, like 30 characters in 30 days, you know, NaNoWriMo. Um, Well, does it have to be? Doesn't have to be, you know? so I, I like that we've done this enough times that we've seen a few patterns emerge. And, and I, I think I'm similarly wired as you are in the sense of like, yeah, we're going to do it every day. We're going to do 30 of them. And I'm going to check in every day no matter what. Like even, there's some I had to do in the car on the way back from teaching classes, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, if that, that feels good in a way and and similarly digging deep because i my takeaway from because what i did was i did 30 i contemplated 30 different transformers characters over the month thinking about what they mean to me what they meant to me as a kid what they mean to me as an adult sort of as like a roundabout way to get at um what do how did how does this 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 franchise which has been very important to me as an entertainment franchise how has it influenced my art like what am i what is making it so attractive to me and by unpacking that can i learn a little bit more about what makes my art tick right um and what worked was is that the premise was very simple this is a thing that i thought about and spent a lot of time talking about with friends for you know virtually my entire life um, so it should be really easy for me to tap in to and, and, and explain what these things mean to me. Uh, however, upon contact with the ground one, I realized I had to make this presentable to somebody who may not necessarily know about this thing the way I know about it. Right. Like there's a lot of shorthand I can use when I'm talking with buddies who like recently watched fire in the sky, you know? Um, but if, if you're not familiar, like super familiar with jet fire or sky fire, um, I got to bring it up to speed and I have to explain like what it is about this character that that means something to me, right? The moment you have to package it for an audience that might not be familiar with that, the topic, it presents a whole new kind of, um, I had to use a lot of sticky notes to like jot down three thoughts. Okay. What are the three things about Skyfire? Three things about Starscream. Three, and which made it again, like similarly to more, more expensive, but what it, what I gained out of it was by formalizing that thinking, it's just like when you teach, right? It's like, I'm, I'm relearning and discovering aspects of this stuff that I hadn't had to um, I hadn't had to make explicit in that way before, right? So I, I did learn a lot. I learned a lot through that journaling process. Um, but the what didn't work is the fact that I was trying to also make it like sort of like a, a lead in to launching a Transformers podcast meant that like there was like a little bit of a formal presentation thing that I had to observe where it's like I got to have intro, outro music, and I got to write up show notes and stuff. And so it wasn't as push button as I would have liked it to be. I mean, this sounds so funny, right? Because it's like I've, I'm recording it on my phone in my car and then I'm just exporting it, right? It's like how how easy has this gotten compared to what it was like in 2006? But it's like I think I would have had more fun doing it if I was just like pushing a button, talking, unpush the button, and it's is gone. It just it's in the it's in the world or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. There was there was post production that I just felt like it made me it made me want to miss podcasting again. <laughs> <laughs> How funny to put it that way! <laughs> wow, it was um, okay. So. 
you really did. I mean, honestly, high five to you where, where um, I was excited listening to, and I, and I heard your learning process along the way when you're connecting with uh, just certain uh, resonant beats about the story and your, you in, and what you identified with uh, at different stages of, of your development as, as mm-hmm. a youth, a teen, 20 year old, and then, you know, an older adult. And it's just like, Holy moly. I would, that was fascinating. And so just as, as someone who cares about story and writing and whatnot, that was, uh, uh, that was inspiring. And, and that, that inspired me to, to, um, to tank another episode of the Polytechnic cast. I was like, that's awesome. I'm going to do that. <laughs> All right. Not posting that one. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I mean, even when, like when you're, all of our schedules are pretty tightly packed, especially if we want to have like any kind of time for humanity and self care. So to like ask ourselves to do, let's add an extra 40 minutes to your day. Right. Cause like if you're doing 15, 20 minutes of recording, then you're going to have like at least that much time doing like the post-production and getting it into the world kind of thing. Um, yeah, there's gotta be a better way to do it. And I liked, I like what a lot of leaners did where some people were just like, here's five, <laughs> here you go. Here's five entries. Uh, it's like, it's like a flight of mini podcasts. Here you go. <laughs> so yeah, great approaches. It, that, so yeah, that was, uh, yeah. I mean, neat to see others setting a different example and uh, super cool food for thought. And I'm, it's, it, it's intriguing because to me as an outsider, it seemed like, wow, this sure is effortless for Jersey. <laughs> look, at, <laughs> look at him go. No, I, I tanked at least two. There was, there was two that I did. And then like, I, I walked away from them. I didn't post them for like five minutes. I'm like, I don't know how I felt about that one. And I like had this internal dialogue. Well, well, they should feel raw. You know, they should feel like unpolished. Like I'm thinking aloud. And then I went back and listened to like five minutes. I was like, no, no, this, this one's not going in the world. And I, I junked it. So there was at least two. Hmm. But but uh, that's funny. I'm glad it seemed effortless because, yeah, it was it was like there were days where I was like, yeah, I love this property. Why, why am I like groaning when I have to talk about Starscream today? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Super fun. So we just, okay. So how do you feel about this reflection? What we just did now? What we just did. Yeah. Uh, I feel like we, that is the beginning of processing to lead us to some action items of how we can address this thing in the future. Um, so how does it, how does it feel to you? Well, yeah. I mean, so to me, like, well, so you, all right. Ideally, well, we did record this. We are recording our, this is a podcast, right? So uh, you create some kind of snapshot in time of your thoughts and judgments about some frame of experience. And, and if you can find some utility in different perspectives about that experience, then I think you've done some kind of rounded enough reflection where it's not just um, well, it's even even if it's not rounded if you just if you captured one feeling about art sound off and put it somewhere that you could find later that's that's something um but what we did was just was was purposefully a little more thorough to try to just have a little time capsule with a variety of signal in it that we can learn from and apply to something in the future there we go um so do you want to talk a little bit about like finding time to process this way? Cause I mean, we've got this big built in thing where we have this weekly meeting where we both show up at a certain time to specifically to talk with each other and do, do a formal presentation of ideas. But then afterwards we talk for like another 45 minutes to an hour about catching up and, you know, future ideas for the show. So like there's like baked in time for this, but one thing that I realized about, other projects in my life, other aspects of my life is that I am not, I'm not successfully finding the time to do that kind of processing about other things that I want to accomplish, things that I want to work on, work that I want to do. Um, or, or even non-work things like, like, uh, you know, further development of my family goals, right? What do Ann and I want to do as people beyond the work that we're working on, you yeah. know? Um, so we these are thoughtful. awesome questions. And I, okay. so I have quirks in this area that I know don't work with everybody. And, you know, I have been <sighs> writing stuff down that I wish and want for 
to have happen in the world and just to remind myself and make my memory a little bit better since I was a teenager, like working at Burger King, I would use whatever paper wasn't nailed down and I'd write stuff down, I'd cram it in my pocket and then I would have piles of like between receipts and placemats. Those were the obvious ones. Like, so extra receipt paper, you know, that stuff was just going to go in the trash. So, all right, I'm going to use it. I'm going to write some stuff down. You know, could have been uh, lyrics plus groceries plus sweet Iron Maiden shirt plus, you know, (laughs) Who knows on these things, but it was captured and it was somewhere where I could go. And I've been doing this for a very long time. Not everyone, you know, your mileage will vary, right? So like you, what, what the process looks like for you who writes stuff down and can find it looks very different to, than someone who doesn't write stuff down, you know? That's true, yeah. Um, but then, but even that important aspect of, um, I mean, I've worked on teams with, with lots of folks who don't write stuff down. And I'm the quirky, oh, look at Rob. You've written stuff down all the time. You got your little deck of cards, Rob. I'm like, God, oh, I got my deck of cards. Hi, I'm Rob. You know, uh, fine, you know, but because <laughs> what am I going to do? Not show up with them? So, uh, okay, can we, can we just stop for a second and just like address that thought? Because like this is something that I get every once in a while from people when they see me drawing, like, oh, look at Picasso over there. I'm like, look, I'm drawing. <laughs> It's something I do. Taking notes is something you do. It's weird that you're noticing it and you're talking about it that way. This doesn't reflect on me. This reflects on you because you're the one saying, look at Picasso over here. You're calling out the fact that this is making you uncomfortable. I'm fine. I'm drawing. This is what makes me happy. (laughs) Uh This is how I suffer all this. Anyway. So, um, so that's just to say, I'm just trying to take that, take that, that, that the qualification you're putting on yourself, and I'm going to turn it around and put it, point it back at the world. Hey, world, you're on blast when you say, "Look at the guy with the note cards." <laughs> exactly. It's like if you don't want to carry them, that's great, and that's what, that's typically what I end up doing is like some little disclaimer. Like, oh yeah, I'm a quirky guy. Oh, oh it's just oh, no cards. Um, and uh, <laughs> it's not like you got like a Rob Liefeld pouch full of note cards either, right? It's like you got this little wallet, you pull it out, you're capturing stuff all the time. But that always registered to be like ever since I've known you and I've known other guys who have a similar quirk. It's just like it always it always comes across to me as hyper intelligence. Like it's just they're vigilant, and they're intelligent and they're trying to capture everything because they know that they, they're going to process this and follow up on it later. Anyway, continue. You have well, note cards. Thank you. And it's better than a, the Burger King receipts or placements. <laughs> More um, efficient. Yes. Tested. Tested and proven. All right. So uh, part of my everyday carry used to be. Anyway, um, <laughs> this, uh, let's see. So, okay. So then the time, the time to look back at this stuff is like, okay, great. You have it or you don't. Either way is fine because the event of looking back at stuff is an opportunity to just dig and whatever you recall, you recall it's something's better than nothing. And um, so when do you do this? I happen to have an almost every week date night with my, my wife and many date nights are some portion of it. We have a meal and, and like before we leave the meal, we, t- we do planning and we do a little bit of reflection and all that stuff. So it's not exactly like what we just talked about, but it's, we're both on our own doing some kind of reflection, frequent exercise. So we typically can sync up with the highlights of our own individual mm. reflections. Okay. Um, so if you're doing something like an, an, uh, on some kind of heartbeat, whether it's, you know, daily, um, you know, weekly, monthly, monthly starts to get a little, is monthly is way better than nothing. And, but it's, but it's one of those things where um, you're somewhat feeling around without as clear uh, representations of, of the, the data and even, the past you you're not staying as 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 clearly in touch with that right and and carrying mm-hmm. some intention forward it's better though than nothing um because it's then it's like well what just once a year and that's where i think you know maybe we'll have time for that where people will be like who cares no card guy what are you doing resolutions look at me um so uh having a meeting is super helpful and Whatever it is, if it's a meeting with yourself, it's a meeting with your collaborators or what have you. Uh, if you're on a team, if you're on any project whatsoever, the 
power of the collective thoughts and cognitive abilities of all that group will be amplified and their ability to work together vastly improved by having some shared story that is a, a, a series of your reflections of what's working and not. And then I try to, I had the gratitude thing or the, the high fives because um, I can't remember what's the cognitive bias where, um, where we, uh, it's, it's a little bit of the sunk cost fallacy. It's a little bit of the fear of loss kind of thing where we're quirky in how we remember stuff where we tend to remember negative things a little more negative stuff mm -hmm. tends to get more, you know, it's classic where an artist says, um, a hundred people complimented me and then one showed up in my inbox and just, just defecated on my, my favorite thing I made or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the one that sticks in your memory. You're not alone. A lot of us have to do that. So I try to have a little more positive, you know, baked into the reflection, believing that somehow we're, what we're doing has more positive than negative. So let's try to remember that. And uh, if you just do something like that with your team, then you'll have um, a variety of things as far as just recognizing one another. You'll have, um, you know, but then if you say, oh, I don't have a team, just recognizing yourself and, and you know, being willing to put on the different uh, perspectives and say that, well, not everything is working. So what's not working? It's okay. You know, you mm -hmm. want to make adjustments. So capture some of that and capture obviously what's, what is working and then, you know, try to amp up the positive signal in the end with some kind of, you know, high fives, yay. Um, and just whatever, like that doesn't have to be a lot. You could have literally three to five words and you've done that reflection. Mm. Just one word in each category. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a, uh, speaking of that, there's this journal that I got recently. I can't remember if I've talked about it on the show or not. Have you, you've seen these, right? These one line a day uh, journals. Oh. Yes, no. Me. I feel so like I have, but I didn't. Yeah. So the idea is, is that it's it's a five year journal, and every day you check in, and there's not much room. There's not a whole lot of room here to actually like you know capture your thoughts. You have essentially enough room to like just write down one line about what happened today or how you're feeling about the day. And the idea is that it over five years you fill the thing up, and you can look at year to year compared day to day. It's how you are feeling about something. And what I like about that, I, I, I fell off the wagon. I got to get back on it with doing this. I was doing this uh, over the summer pretty regularly. Um, but what I like about that idea is like, it's got a double challenge. It's like brevity's hard. You know, both you and I know this more than many. <laughs> Having 10, 295 episodes of a podcast that sometimes runs as long as two hours. Um, but, um, and it's got that challenge of like, okay, well, just just pick one. Just pick one. What's the one thing that stands out today, right? Um, which has a kind of a simplicity to it. Um, it creates like a little tension of a... But but it, it, the, it, the main thing is it's getting you to capture something. You don't have to capture the whole day. You don't have to write for five, to five hours. Just write down one sentence about what, what the day was like, which is something. It is something. and But then setting the, the whole... Um, setting aside, there's some kind of you know, combo thing that we're talking about here, because there's the habit of capturing the things and there's the habit of reflecting on the things. And when do you make time to do either? Yeah. And if you're at least making time to reflect, you're going to do some kind of capture. I, I would hope because mm -hmm. then you're making the reflection meaningful and creating a chain of experience you can reflect on what have you. Um, and if that's, uh, I know you mentioned you have like a weekly meeting with yourself, right? I do. Yes. I just, I have, Ann and I haven't had one together and we need to start doing that. So I have my, my weekly meeting is sort of like looking at last week's ETP. I, I, that's, that's my main journal capture device is my emergent task planner, which is more of a work tracker thing. But I, I do put in some qualitative data in terms of, I have a section called what good, what good happened today. And I try to just capture one, one thing as often as I can that like went right. It's like, it's like my daily high five. Um, it, but uh, so I look at the past week, I evaluate, okay, how did everything go? And now I'm going to write down my tasks for this week and I'm going to estimate what I can accomplish based on what I did last week versus what uh, other extenuating circumstances are coming up in terms of doctor's appointments, holidays, other things that like are going to cut into my work week. So nice. So it's a, uh, and even that, so like, wherever you can get a foothold if, if you're someone who likes to map out your logistics and time and schedule and 
uh, resources for projects or whatnot, that's a fantastic time to just to, to dig into the, that process. But then collaborating with with the partner and whatnot, too. Um, I do find it helpful to like for us, we we make that uh, a little slice of our date night. And mm-hmm. I, admittedly, when we get to like sort of that yearly goal planning stuff, we'll we'll have we'll set up a bunch of meetings and um, it's a project for us that mm. we like to do. <laughs> so again, like if, if it's, if it seems not that, you know, not that appealing or appealing enough to endure some amount of discomfort, then, you know, finding some kind of um, small process to, to commit to. And if you have that small process to commit to, you can start digging through whatever data you actually have. And if you're someone who captures a lot habitually, if you capture it in a structured way or an unstructured way, uh, you're still ready to, um, you know, to, to embark on that. And, and it can probably help you more than hurt if it's a, if it's a, um, you know, little box of time, right? So if you have a, a 15 minutes at the end of a meal, that's great. If you have an hour and a half, probably also great. Mm-hmm. You know, more data. Yeah. Uh, you put someplace in the notes and maybe this is slated for the second half of the show is that even like your photo library can be data that you capture. And I know Ann and I use this a lot to help us remember what the heck happened this year, you know, cause we were just, we we're in the middle of these discussions saying like, it feels like a lot's happened this year. It feels like we did a lot of things, but like, I don't feel terribly like I'm speaking for myself now. I don't feel like I'm terribly like, uh, accomplished right i don't like i'm not looking back going like yeah i did all that it's like it feels more like a lot of stuff happened to me <laughs> and I, and so like I, I that's a bad signal i or that's a signal that troubles me let's go back and look at like and i just went through our photos month by month i'm like no we did a lot of cool stuff we did a lot of cool stuff stuff wasn't just happening to me i was doing stuff too um but and and thankfully photo apps uh, keep track of when the photos were taken. It's not like when we were kids when we just have like a box of photos, right? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> it's not fun. It's so <laughs> annoying. But now it's like all, it's all organized by date and it'll even like a lot of photo apps will even say like, hey, here, here's a photo from one year ago today. You know, so we're getting that kind of, you, you probably have that kind of um, signal in your life in some way or another just by virtue of the fact that you take pictures with your, with your telephone, right? Definitely. It's somewhere in there. Like, so you have, uh, you're going to have some trail somewhere digitally that can assist you, your emails, mm-hmm. your calendar, your photos, um, being pretty strong, ubiquitous ones that a lot of folks have. Um, so for sure I did, uh, I know like I, I mentioned, let's see, it's in the notes here, but it's more probably second half, but like I, I did that whole project at the beginning of 2016, reflecting on 2015, the whole, um, uh, I made an experience inventory. Yeah, we've talked about that. We have had whole episodes. We've mentioned it a bunch of times that I don't recommend doing that. Honestly, like why that's not? not for the faint of heart. <laughs> um, it was an immensely challenging project. It was, um, it was hard as far as even the kinds of things I was exploring. I mean, I had a lot of sort of ups and downs in the experience of different, like just personal and professional project type things. Right. And, and I went where I, I felt I needed it. And I, I, I was willing to pay the, the project price to go through and get tons of data mining everything I use. Because I do generate a lot of notes. So that alone, plus photos and email, da, 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 you're right. It's just, it really was, it was a lot. And in, I think it's somewhere around like 4,000 data points that I ended up mining for and I created, um, you know, so that was in a spreadsheet and I created different reports that, and I, cause I rated, um, I was looking for signal based on like what, where, what was, what signals was I getting from the world as far as what people um, liked what I did and also paid me for what I did and all that kind of stuff. And what were, what sort of themes were across that? So I could look by uh, where was, what was, what thematic type of experience was viable and what didn't I make money at? What did I lose money at? What did I you know, mm. but that was a lot of work. Um, <laughs> and I share plenty of detail about that in a blog post, which is at interactive dash storyteller.com. I've had it up on the screen and you, you have the experience inventory questions. There's a lot of questions here. How many questions are there? There's 20 questions and it's in, in three categories, info about the experience effect on me and effect on others. 
um, yeah, this is this is a if you really want to take a deep dive on like how how far you can go with this kind of thing, this kind of topic, uh, we'll link to it in the show notes. But I mean, I think it's worth reading for, but not just as like a cautionary tale, but, well, <laughs> but it it's a way. A, hopefully, it's a sign on a cliff where you're like, "No, I'm that advanced of a skier. I'm going." <laughs> I'm like, okay, there's a sign. Is it, Rob is the was it the double black diamond? Is that what it's called? Is it? I guess <laughs> yeah. I'm sure inventory. people go through more. Like maybe this is like not double black diamond, but it's certainly not trivial. But yeah, I was just saying like, it'd be worth reading through just to say like, well, here's somebody who's carefully structured their thought around this to like give you a starting point to how to approach this kind of thing in the future, like, how, to, how to experience processing these ideas. Um, is there anything else we want to cover before we head to the break? We're heading towards break time. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so let's say uh, about the like the time thing, just schedule, so you're, you have to block time somehow to do this mm -hmm. um the time this is a different activity than other things you're doing that fills your day it's it's uh it's it doesn't come incidentally and uh and we'll we'll talk more about maybe maybe some of the why yeah we'll t talk about some of the why in the second half but there is there is like this whole idea like so one thing that happened during october with the the 30 day challenge that i took on then is that it had a big impact on my self-care like i stopped exercising altogether in that month because that hour that i was using to create this new project um was the hour that i would have spent at, in the gym or outside on the trails um which i knew that was going to be that was going to have a huge negative impact come november december because i was going to be like a big ramp up to getting back into that habit again and sure enough there was a lot of mental there's a lot of mental preparation I had to do each night. Like, okay, tomorrow before you go to work, you're going to run. You're just going to do it. That's all there is to it. And my body's going, no, I don't want to. It's like really hard now. I'm like, yeah, I know, but you're going to do it, you know? Um, and I feel like making a commitment requires a little bit of that. Like that, that initial tension is there when, whenever I start a new commitment, right? Um, unless it's like, an encapsulated like 30 day challenge. Then it's like, I go in going, yeah, until about day 15. I'm like, Oh no. What but, <laughs> yeah. but, but anyway, uh, so I think there's like, there's a little bit of that. It's like, there's, I would say at least if my experience is any indication, be prepared for that friction to happen where it's like, yeah, well, you know, maybe I don't feel like doing my weekly meeting. Well, you just do it. <laughs> I mean, it sounds dumb, but like, that's how, that's how running is for me. It's like, yeah, I just do it. I didn't want to do it this morning. I did it. And then I feel better for doing it. I guess I feel at least like I'm taking care of myself. It has effect. Yeah. There's an, uh, a, an accreting effect of your, yeah. you're choosing to put this thing in your way in your life and you keep at it and it affects you over time. And yeah. it's not mandatory. I think exercise is probably more important than journaling a little bit, but <laughs> I wouldn't actually, for me personally, I put them pretty darn close to equal. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's a mental self care thing. Yeah. Uh, so, but, but I, I like how you, you know, the emphasizing that the friction can exist and uh, if it matters, then find a way to get past the friction, which is not trivial and it's easy to say. And, and, uh, but I can totally acknowledge that, that, uh, that it's true that it will affect you probably for the positive if you, if you make it a practice and that also not everyone does it. I've, again, I've been a part of a lot of teams, a lot of situations where there's not that same kind of reflection, but then at least as far as the heartbeat of the team and, and the collective memory, there is a participation in a process that does try to shape the future based on what we've, what we've learned from what we did. A friend of mine recently described in uh, his organization meetings, they would have a mission minute they would spend like they had baked into the meeting 60 seconds just to remind ourselves why we're doing what we're doing. Right. Which I mean, it, I could see some, I could see some eyes roll at the thought of that, but it is super easy to lose track of the why of what you're doing sometimes. Right. Like the, 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 the day to day, um, sort of putting out fires and keeping things moving, building inertia, uh, can 
disconnect you with the reason why you're doing it at all in the first place. And I can tell you, as somebody who is very mission driven, I even lose track of that with my teaching work. There are days where I feel like, oh, why am I doing this again? You know, and it's like, I need a mission minute. So like, that's just like one tiny example of how like having these kinds of like scheduling that time can reconnect you with, um, in profound ways with like bigger ideas, uh, around the the how or the why of what you're doing uh, in the first place and and once you've identified that why usually the how can like is is easier to get to um so i yes it's 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 this is awesome and, and this is what we'll i'm, I'm sure we'll we'll uh be exploring yeah. this a bit more in in the next uh next section all right well, let's talk about it in the next let, let's take a break for a minute and a half and then we'll come back and talk about more reasons why uh journaling reflection and scheduling time to process is helpful to us but before we do that we have to thank some people who make this show possible and those people have to be the folks who support us on patreon patreon.com slash lean into art is the website and it is, it is a way for you to give us a monthly upvote if you say hey i believe in jersey i believe in rob and i believe in the work they're doing I would like to help make it more sustainable. You can contribute as little as a dollar a month and you can cancel it uh, at any time. You can just do like a one month uh, contribution and then wait for the month to pass. You can enjoy a whole bunch of uh, exclusive content there first. And then you could cancel it. You know, you made your contribution. Thank you. And we want to thank five people who have been doing ongoing contributions at, at patreon.com slash lean to art. First up, the mysterious K. Thank you, K. We don't know who you are, but we're grateful for your support. And then Good To Be Curious. Uh, good To Be Curious you can find on Twitter at Good To Be Curious. That's easy to remember. And Rachel Ross. Thank you, Rachel, for supporting the show. You can find Rachel on Twitter at NYC Terrace. And Merjam. Thank you, Merjam, for believing in us and what we do. You can find Merjam on Twitter at M-Y-R-J-A-M-V-D-V. These will all be in the show notes, so you don't have to write this down. And finally, Stephen Stonebush. Thank you, Stephen, for supporting the show. And uh, you can join them all at patreon.com slash lean into art, where you'll find all the shows we make, as well as the extra leans, the shows we record only for people who support us on Patreon. Those posts become an open mic thread where you can talk about whatever you want in a safe place with fellow leaners. Patreon.com slash lean into art. Thank you to everybody who has been supporting us there. It means a lot to us. It really does. Thanks. All right. I got to find some more music. Uh, I can't. I can't do a show without <laughs> without doing that. <laughs> okay. Second half's gonna be fiery hot because uh, we're talking about why. Why do this stuff in the first place? Defend yourself, Rob. Why are you so weird with your note cards? Stop being weird. Um. Well, I suppose in a way. I'm haunted by the void. <laughs> and creating some structure of my own thoughts creates a, um, it's a safety fence. It's a, it's a boundary between me and the void and it lets me uh, stay on this side of it. No, it's a, uh, uh, oh, let's see what you described as far as uh, just, and I think both of us kind of talked around this idea of when, when you look back, you're in a very different situation. Uh, if, if you've, if you had a, had a chain of those events to build off of, and if you've had a, um, you know, some method to capture and, and uh, make it easy to look back when you look back again, you're like building a, a capability. And so by doing that, you look, you can think like you mentioned, if not maybe, maybe I wasn't this year felt busy, but what happened? What did I get done? Do I feel as accomplished and as I thought I would feel by this point in this year? What even happened? And then here your photos are to back you up and say, well, hey, I'm an outboard memory to help you get past your unreliable narrator. Of mm. the, you know, like what you're feeling right now. None of us can hold all this stuff in our heads. Right. And I don't pretend that even I can't even hold all my notes in my head, but I can hold enough of it by by reaching out and uh, gathering some of it. And then uh, it gets me out of wherever I'm at right now in this moment. Um, let's see. It gets, gets me really into this moment, too. But like whatever I'm carrying with me about, you know, fears, concerns, 
uh, baggage, ups and downs, whatever. I, and if I, um, and I want to know like, what, where am I at in the story? Where am I at in where, what's, what's happening with, um, you know, these big projects I care about and all that stuff. It, is it farther than I, th have I moved it? Have I not? Where, and, and so, yeah, you get to get to compare and even like your, your assumptions and fears and concerns, that's an asset to capture it. Like, this is what I was worried about going into this reflection. Um, mm -hmm. This is what I was hoping. I always think that's, that's a nice little, little um, mechanism, like a design activity to capture some hopes and fears just when you're starting a meeting. Um, like, mm. what, are, what are you hoping to get out of this? What are you worried is going to not happen or um, what bad could come of this? Wait, do you do this before or after the meeting? Before. Hopes and fears is a nice one to get things rolling. Interesting. Does, does writing down the fears change your relationship with the fears in the meeting? Oh, totally. Yeah. How so? Because it's not, it's not this, uh, um, it's not this, you know, crappy shoulder spirit um, crappy shoulder spirit parrot going, you know, uh, I told you this would suck, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, you, you'll never finish that, that thing that you were starting to work on three years ago. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, so you're like, Oh, okay, wait, okay. Write down. Uh, I know I'm worried. I'll never finish the thing I started working on three years ago. You write it down. <laughs> you're like, Hey, shut up parrot. Don't have to hear it anymore. <laughs> Look, got it, got it. It's right here. See, I wrote it out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it helps, I, you I, I, it helps it become something you can manage around too, and then, then you can look back at the end of the meeting to say, "How did it go?" Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that idea of of deghosting it. <laughs> like I've 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 captured you on a piece of paper, literally captured you. You're you're right there now. You're not in here nice. anymore. Yeah, you kind of ghost busted it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's neat. Okay. Yeah. So there's the outboard memory aspect and, and, uh, you, you mentioned the unreliable narrator. And by that, you mean like this, this negative self talk that can sometimes pop up in our heads when we're feeling anxious about a thing. Yeah. And it, I mean, a lot of times I think typically with, I have no idea, but I know a lot of unreliable narrators are negative jerks and, yeah. but some of them can be arrogant jerks. And that's true too. You know, like maybe there's uh, the whole idea, like you thought you'd be further, you feel like you're further, but maybe you're not there. And mm. that's an unreliable narrator too. And it's, it's worth seeing where things really are at. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, so what's this got to do with goal planning though? I mean, so it's like, yeah, we can learn more about ourselves. We can be more self-aware. Um, but how does that help us with actually figuring out where we want to be, and what we want to accomplish? Because right, I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating a cynical mindset coming in and saying like, well, all you've done is you've um, rationalized a bunch of failure. <laughs> That's great. You shut off your negative self-talk. Now you don't have anybody to keep you from falling off the rails. Hold on a so, sec. I have to add another sticky note to my hopes and fears here. <laughs> Worried I'm only rationalizing my failures. Um, <laughs> you'll have a story. Everyone does. It's part of, it's another, another one of our biases. You, you look back and you think this, therefore, because of that. And, and, you know, things happen in a certain order and we create meaning and, and, uh, uh, through how we relate to those experiences and what we believe exists in those experiences. Stories are awesome and powerful, but yeah. Um, I would say that that is just a story. Um, the, like throwing a, throwing a spin on it to say, uh, that sounds like you're, you're taking away your power in my opinion, or someone who would be on your team trying to take, like take away the belief that you can affect the future. And I think that, that, that's an interesting perspective. They're, they're, you know, some, let's see, what is free will? Um, <laughs> and what I can say is that uh, I 
look at this as a way to feel functional and healthy about what I'm trying to accomplish in my life. And then having some method of looking back helps chain the experiences together without like, you know, so you could plan goals. You don't have to reflect to plan goals. You totally don't. But then how are you setting yourself up to then get those goals accomplished? How are you recognizing, um, you know, what, what is challenging or close at hand based on what you've, what you've done and what you've prepared yourself to do? I mean, there's, yeah, there's, there's just a lot of utility you're just throwing out the window if you aren't looking back. Because then your next, your goals, um, I don't think are a functioning system in that, at that point without the looking back. You've, you've created a, a forward wish machine that's probably better than nothing, but then you'd not, you're not necessarily observing um, what you could do to get closer to the outcomes that you wish to have by recognizing the your your past experience the implicit in the this statement of a goal is an acknowledgement of not here right a goal by definition is not here it doesn't exist yet okay well why is it better than now right like it has it has to make that case right otherwise why do it and unless we understand where we are now and what got us to now how can we make it, it, at least this this is how the logic is, is playing out in my head you can you can pop that bubble if you want if, if there if it is a bubble but like it, it seems like a knowledge of where you are and where you've been is like baked into uh the whole idea of establishing where to go next yeah, I mean, think about a map. If, think, if a goal is a, is a destination, an outcome, how in the heck do you get there? Where are you right now? Like, that's well, implied. I was, the picture was happening in my head when you were describing your journaling and like how, the reasons why you keep all these cards and so on. I was like, oh, he's got a Zelda map of his life going on. Like, he's got, he knows where he is right on the screen, but in the upper left-hand corner is Rob's Zelda map of all the dungeons that he has, uh, you know, excavated so far and the ones yet to do. The rooms that haven't been changed turn into the other color, whatever color they switch into. But yeah, I mean, it's uh, yeah, it's it's an action RPG with less goon killing, right? Um, Hopefully, <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> At least when we hope, may all your goon killing be metaphorical. It's my wish for you. So, uh, let's see. So you're thinking, all right, goal planning. Why why do the reflection to do the planning? And I think we've we kind of we, we I think we have our a, a decent rationale for that. Mm -hmm. um, what, um, so what, why else reflect in order to plan? Um, there's a, uh, I actually put a quote from uh, art, and, art and Science Punks in the show notes mm. in that, uh, uh, what I shared with, uh, with Kate, I think last year is that um, I think it's, I do this, I do this because I believe that and I, I, I celebrate it and I want others to, to play with this as well, because I believe we can shape our circumstance. Mm. I think you can affect the world that you exist and you will affect the world. You can make that be more what you believe in and want to uh, see happen. If you uh, find ways to navigate that skillfully. So that's, that's a prize waiting. That's it. You can shape your circumstance. How much, how far, and it's different. We're all, you know, different level, different circumstance in life. What do we, what baggage do we carry? What privilege do we have? What, um, what level of challenge are you about to commit to? Every bit of it, it's a variable, it affects, but. Right, your, your statement, try. your statement doesn't identify qual, uh, quality or quantity, right? But it's just, it's a, it's a, a, a basic baseline of this. You can. You were an agent in shaping your circumstance. Um, yeah, and there, there's a line in um, Boulder and Fleet, Mining for Trouble, where Boulder says to the bad guy, you talk about power and responsibility like they're two different things. You know, uh, I, I, I feel like if we're going to get all like, you know, morally pontificating about this, like if you could shape your circumstance, that means you have a degree of power, which means in my head, at least, there's a certain responsibility to be thoughtful about how you employ that, right? Mm -hmm. So... That's that's a reason that I take notes. 
<laughs> that's the reason that I, I chart things on my ETP. It has it has practical benefit in that I can give you an accurate estimation of how long it's going to take me to complete a certain kind of project. But it's also, it's like, well, if I'm going to do this thing right, then I should probably be as aware as I can be of what my abilities are so that I can be uh, of utility to other people and and bring about the outcomes that I want to bring about in this world. So, And so goals are a mechanism to bring about those outcomes. They're, they're a part of a, a system of mechanisms, right? So if you are thoughtful, if you're observant on some recurring basis and you encapsulate some of these observations as your intent that you want to bring about in the form of, of goals, and then what do you do in support of your goals? And, you know, things like task management and what have you, uh, frequent uh, structured reflection and uh, solo with your teams, all that stuff. I, I think it's worth it's worth identifying here that something I think we're both sort of pointing away from, but we haven't explicitly pointed away from is one of the things that I think task management gets coupled with a lot is productivity. What do you got to show for your day? And like mm. that, right? It, like in that, how do how do we how do we navigate this healthily, Rob? Because like there's part of me who wants to rebel against the idea because like that is so late 1800s industrial era kind of like well, how many widgets did you make today kind of thing but it's not that simple because like productivity matters like like you were talking about accreting um skill like by showing up and doing the thing over and over again um and like we both make products we make things and there's a certain level of deliver delivery that has to be done on a regular basis in order to make a thing so there is something to be said for what do you got to show for your day but I feel like there's there's a ferocity sometimes coupled with this whole idea of productivity. Like, look at how much productivity I accomplished today, right? When that uh, isn't the end goal we're talking about necessarily, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it, by all means, um, break your rusty cage and run. And despite all your rage, don't be a rat in a cage, all that. Like, don't, I, what I find is that the, the these goals and the language around it I think get conflated in that we can find personal, regular human day-to-day -day life meaning in it, but it also comes with a lot of business culture that is heavily talked about and celebrated because there, there's a lot of support in the um, funding of thinking about it and talking about it and all that. So we get, I think, conflation and, con and, and, and um, sort of uh, vocabulary conflicts where a word can turn into the, the, you know, it goes from your magical sword to the, you know, the, the um, you're, you're chained up like a horse and you got to run harder and faster because you're being measured based on the thing because, oh, they're my goals for the whatever. And it depends on where you work, right? Because if where you work has a great, uh, I hope has, has a, um, some kind of, uh, healthy, sustainable uh, set of beliefs around your goals as an individual being meaningful for the company as well. And like they need to somehow integrate it, but in not in a creepy way that subjugates you or gets rid of your agency and ability to develop as a human because you're not just a mechanism for productivity as a, as a human resource that has you, you're more than that. I don't care what your job is and how you're measured, how you record and all that stuff. You are more than that. And find ways to push against that system because that system is super broken and not going to help the business in the long run. That's short-term thinking, trying to squeeze value. And uh, this is not why we're talking about goals. Um, I don't want to squeeze your value. Um, I don't want you to squeeze your value. Right, right. Yeah. Like this is this is something that uh, I think about as I'm trying to decrease the amount of time it takes me to complete a page of comics. Right. I'm trying to find all these different shortcuts to get it done as, as fast as I can. And and there's a squeezing of value in that, too. It's like, what's the minimum amount of time I can get to, to get to the maximum product? But the reason I'm doing that is to make a uh make one make the project more sustainable over, overall right so like if i can get a book done in eight months then like that makes the advance actually like you know um a living wage because advances aren't huge um and two it means that i can be a person 
in my my life. I can have a relationship with my partner, my spouse, right? Uh, I don't have to be doing 16, 18 hour days uh, to to complete the amount of work that is required to do the work that I do. Um, but it's not to, well, I could do six books a year. <laughs> sure. So you're not looking, well, you know, watch me create a contraption where I yoke myself up to this money generating <laughs> yeah. machine. Right. And I'm going to work super hard until I can't anymore. Um, and that's an option. But honestly, if you're choosing that out of your own, your own, um, I don't know, beliefs and design. Great. I guess I'm, I, I'm neutral, uh, judging that other than sure. cautious, but, uh, uh, the idea that um, yeah these 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 words get get used for a lot of different things and yeah uh, they do um, where where I think they're at their most powerful useful important um, and and nurturing is if you're you're thinking about what what do you want to bring about and how are you going to set yourself up to bring that about and that's you know it's really it is about you and if you're doing it in a robust way you're thinking about other aspects that make up your existence you're thinking about how you are well you you, you have some way that you engage in trade and your your professional commitments and stuff uh that makes sense to factor in it's part of your life right um but then yeah the, all these other things that start to you know create um hopefully a a set of goals that is just i guess yeah something that you can get behind not something that you're being crushed under yeah there's 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 a uh it's it's a funny dance that my brain has to do between being like really excited for a thing and uh finding a way to make it like make my interaction with it sustainable sustainable in the sense of like doing it for a long time because a lot of the projects I do take like a year or more to do which means that I got to find a way to navigate my relationship with this thing so that I keep so I'm not overly enthusiastic about it so that it's all I'm doing and then I burn myself out on it but like try to like manage that that energy between me and the thing over that whole period of time because there's going to be dips where I don't want to do it, where I feel really miserable about it, where that, that negative self-talk talks me out of thinking that I have any right to do it. <laughs> and there's going to be days where I'm just like, it's all I think about. And I wind up putting in like 15 hours on in the day on it. And it's like, I can't do that over and over again. So anyway, yeah. Um, Which is all, let's see. So like making and breaking patterns, that's another reason to do this. So mm your notice you can notice the pattern better if you're taking time in some cyclic fashion to use your executive function right where take a look at this and say wait a minute this is too many 15 hour days like this is happening like sporadically but too still too frequently or whatever it is you're the person who gets to uh witness the patterns and then and put in new approaches to create to break that pattern and make a new one mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's good. That's worth it. Um, we're closing in on final thought, but I wonder if you, we could talk a little bit about uh, encouragement and accountability before we get to that. So, you know, we mentioned a little bit about where where to find the time, and there was a little bit of like, well, you sort of make the time, but you had another thought on this uh, that I wonder if you could speak to just a tiny bit. Certainly. Um, so. Well, surprise, create, make it a challenge, make it a creative challenge where uh, you give yourself a, a window of time and an outcome that you want to get and, uh, and, and work at it. So I, maybe it's, uh, you're going to, let's see, pick a goal process and work through, you know, this, that whole thing, which I'm totally mentioning because of a thing that I'm working on that I'll mention later, but, uh, but I, there's, there's a bunch of different goal processes out there. Uh, and you can say, well, I'm going to take this week uh, instead of the whatever wind down activity I do, I'm, 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 I'm putting it in my way, right? And I'm going to make a creative challenge that by the end of this week, I have even a rough draft of my goals for the next year or whatever, um, even month. And then to, and then have that be informed by some reflection. So let's say I do days one through three uh, reflecting and then uh, days, you know, 
four through seven, uh, planning what's, what's next, whatever it is, uh, structure yourself a challenge, time box it, and, uh, and make it more than just that, just one event, because it's hard if, if you've not done this before, it's like scheduling going to the gym once. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and as a matter of fact, the way I got into uh, physical fitness self care, I, 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 I have such a problem with even the language around it, because like physical fitness, I always think of like, really ripped dudes. I'm just talking about like, just maintenance, physical maintenance. <laughs> How about that? Just like try to keep the wheels from falling off as I get older. But um, like, I used uh, the Couch to 5K app, right? Which gave me like daily prompts. Okay, okay, this is what you're doing today. This is the specific, you're doing this three days a week. Here's the prescription. Okay, I follow along with that. Uh, because I had no idea how much or how little I was supposed to do. Like when I first became vegetarian and all I ate was rice and raw vegetables for six months and I lost an incredible amount of weight, like or an alarming amount of weight because I didn't know what I was doing. And then I went to a doctor like, hey, you're borderline anemic because you don't get enough iron or, or protein in your diet at all. I'm like, oh, am I supposed to? I'm 22. <laughs> <laughs> so i mean it's like the, the idea of boxing at a challenge gives you at least some kind of structure that makes it easier to follow than just like you said scheduling going to the gym once mm. yeah couch to 5k that's a great uh, concept for this um <laughs> and he's writing stuff down on the card people i am so no, it's, you know okay oh but can God. i also say like to close with this thought on like like reasons why is it also makes you a little bit more observant and present because if if you are and i don't want to say like you're it's not like you're hyper vigilant for what is affecting you but is it's getting you i i recently so for thanksgiving i was visiting some friends who have young children and i was marveling as somebody who doesn't have children i was marveling at what a reflex it is for them to speak to like identify when their children are potentially behaving in uh, unhealthy ways to steer their language back to healthy thinking, right? And it was just like this, It's. It, it, I mean, they live with them. So of course they're practicing this all the time. But to, so for them, it was an absolute reflex, right? But to me, it looked like a magic trick. It's like you are always aware when they're on the verge of doing something that's not good for them and you're helping steer them in gentle ways back to doing something that's good for them. And like, well, yeah, we were parents. They're like, oh yeah, that's right. This is a practice thing. But I mean, this is something I see with you is like you are really fine tuned to listening to what's happening and capturing ideas as they affect you. And it's not like you're sitting there like, you know, with like a spirit, a shield going like, I am ready to absorb the world. It's just, it's, it's a reflex because you're practiced at it. Right. Mm. Yeah. I, I, right. It does become a practice. It, it is, it is a practice and um, you, <sighs> how I've practiced it and the things I can get out of it has evolved over time. Like I have a whole system to this stuff and it's not expensive for me because I've practiced. So. And, and one last thought I'll put on this before we head into final thought and we got to talk about some other people who make the show possible um, is uh, part of the fun for me of trying out a new thing is, is actually doing it poorly, right? Beginner's mind, bumping into the walls. Um, you know, I, I keep going back to my experience in my watercolor class when the teacher leaned over my shoulder was like, oh, well, you tried. <laughs> and it's like when when you feel like you're fairly competent at a few things, it's fun to get back in that beginner's mindset of figuring it out all over again. Um, I've recently taken on a couple other challenges, which maybe I'll talk about at a later date because I'm, I'm still processing that. But one of the things that I'm, I'm enjoying about it is like – sort of enjoying the um, permission to do it poorly, right? Like like letting myself off the hook and saying like, you know, this is your first time doing this. You don't have to be awesome at it. Let's just, let's just experience it. Because you only get to experience it for the first time once. So might as well experience it, right? What a great, yeah, that's absolutely. Even, so yeah, you have, you have a rough go of, of doing a goals process. And it'll look funny next year. Like it'll look, yeah. It, it, in some way, you'll think, "Gosh, I have, I have come further." Right? That's enough. That's enough reason to do it. Mm -hmm. And right. And so, but yeah, the beginners. But yeah, to really, really go for it as a as a beginner. And and I respect the uh, the ambitious uh, go getters as well. Um, but yeah, at the same yeah. time, it's okay to suck it up once in a while. 
just <laughs> it's it's um <sighs> that is an interesting thing to notice and um yeah navigate from it's a place something in your map. something Dan Michigan once said to me he was telling this is all oh, ages ago he was telling me about the his dark materials book series which I'd read a little bit of I hadn't read the whole series and I was like oh yeah I'm familiar with it and he's like He's like, I only envy that you get to experience it for the first time. He's like, I wish I could go back and experience it the way I experienced it the first time. I'm like, oh my gosh, like that's that is like that's uh, that is demonstrates something that I think is really profound and important for us to remember is that we only get to do it for the first time once, and uh, I, it's made me more conscious of when I'm doing something for the first for the first time. To instead of like doing this all the time, looking over my shoulder, like, am I doing it right? Am I doing it right? I don't want anybody to get mad at me for doing it wrong. Uh, but to actually like enjoy the bumping into the walls thing. Uh, when I was when I was in um, first grade, I went to I, I, my family went to church. We went to Catholic church, and so we went to communion. And communions when they have the priest up at the front of the room with the bread and the wine, you know. And it's like they give you the, the bread. Well, they had there's two sides of the congregation, so there's two priests, one on either side with the bread. Well, I was in first grade, so I'm going up and I'm like, I go to the first guy, I get my bread, and I look over and I'm like, there's another guy. So I go over to him, <laughs> and I get another one. My parents are like, you took the host twice. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I didn't know. You know, there's two guys. It looked like it was like you're supposed to go through twice. Like I think of experiences That's like that, stations, right? Stations, like in school, like you know. <laughs> In the lunchroom, there's one thing. You just go through once. So, like, I'm thinking, like, this is the other end of the thing. Anyway. <laughs> but, like, I think that demonstrates this idea, too, is, like, there are some people in the room who are like, that is sacrilege. You, 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 you're you heretical because you did it wrong. But to me, I was like, well, it was set up in a way that made me think, eh, I don't know. What am I going to do? I'm, I'm a kid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, final thought time? Yeah, let's go to final thought. Okay. So uh, in a minute or two minutes, we're going to conclude with some final thoughts. And Rob's going to... Uh, are you going to pull the the curtain back a little bit on something you've been working on? Yeah, let's do that a little bit. Okay. Okay, cool. Something related to this topic today. All right. Uh, so be thinking about goals, everybody. Think about what you... Ah, here we go. Here's the challenge. As we head into the break, I want the, the, I'm going to place this little seed. Think about what goals you might want to accomplish in 2020. Just like, even if you can't formulate it into a full thought, just maybe break down three words that like make you think like, that's good. That I would like that to be a thing in 2020. And then when we come back with final thought, Rob's got something interesting to share with you about that. So before we do that, we got to thank some other people to make this show possible. Those people happen to be us. We make this show possible. And the thing that I make that I hope you will check out, as a matter of fact, i got to pull up on Chrome, is today, at the time of this stream, the new podcast that I've started about the Transformers has launched. It is called Four Million Years Later. And what is it? It's me and a old, old friend of mine, a guy I've known for about 26 years now, um, and we've spent almost that entire time once a week talking on the phone about transformers <laughs> and it took us until now to say yeah maybe we should record some of these conversations and so we're going through the generation one transformers cartoon series episode by episode we watch the show and then we get together and we talk about the show um so it's going to be at least for this first one this first round 98 episodes for each episode of of the generation one transformer series and what launched today is our episode zero which is the sort of the faq primer like why we're doing it how we're doing it sort of establishing what our internal ground rules are for engaging with this material and and why why do this when there's like a zillion transformers podcasts what what, what do we bring to the table you could find it at four million years later.com so if you'd like to have me talking about storytelling twice a week get the lean tart cast and now you have four million years later.com so please go and subscribe there uh you know as soon as you can uh rob you make uh, another thing. Yeah. You, you, yeah. So, um, okay. So let's say you like this idea of having a brain trust, or let's say you like this I the idea of having um, someone explore um, the kind of things that you are trying to work on, like your, your goals, maybe uh, big career decisions, that kind of thing. And uh, it's 
actually pretty reasonable to hire a coach to help you navigate that that process. And actually a few episodes back, I've been meaning to post like this uh, snippet too. I'll, I'll do that soon where uh, it's Jersey and I did a sample coaching session. And the idea of, of um, let's see, Jersey was looking at a, 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 a set of uh, questions about the project he was working on and how did he want to proceed with it and re-engage in a different way. And through just the, the having a coach listen, ask, ask some questions that help uh, provide different avenues of thinking and exploring a topic, uh, Jersey landed on a, on a way forward. And that's what the, that's what coaching is all about is someone to listen deeply to you and, and what to think about like in your day to day life, who and when do you have someone that really listens to everything you're saying super deeply and then asks you thoughtful questions. And that's why you hire a coach because it's pretty rare. Um, and so you can go to robcoach.me and sign up and give it a try. It's, uh, it's uh, super easy to uh, schedule a, a, um, a, I call it a discovery session. It's one of those things where, yeah, it's coaching just like I did with Jersey and just like Jersey did with me, but it's the, um, you know, it's, it's like, it's a place to ask and learn more about like, how could this be useful to you? What are you thinking about? What's, what's, uh, what's keeping you up at night about your creative projects? I'm here to help. Go to robcoach.me. And it was episode 288, Finding Momentum Midway Through, where I was stuck on my Inktober uh, challenge, and I was sort of feeling like I was sagging in the saddle a little bit, and then Rob coached me through. And you can so you can get a preview of what the coaching looks like by listening to that or watching that episode. And in like 30 minutes, I through your careful navigation of the idea with me, I wound up discovering this whole avenue of the project that I was neglecting that got me really, really fired up about doing it again. So yeah, it, it was it's the idea is is that Rob was sitting there very carefully and very giving you his full attention and listening to you sort of like talk out loud about your ideas and then offering little tiny nudges to help point you towards uh, coming to your own conclusion as to what you need to do. So uh, it, I'm, I'm telling you as a user of the service that it worked for me. So uh, robcoach.me. And then the final thing we hope you'll check out that we make is the Lean Into Art Discord. We will have the invite link in the show notes for the episode. But yes, we have a forum now. We have a social place for fellow leaners to hang out. There are three channels for for the public to in, engage with. There's the topic request t uh, channel where you can you know talk with, give us suggestions about things you want us to address on the show. There's comments where you can comment on past episodes and discuss episodes with fellow leaners. And then there's the challenges quests channel where you can post things like that, uh, different kind of creative challenges you might be engaging with. So if you do create a you know creative challenge for yourself of journaling, you could share your experiences there in the challenges quests channel. And then finally, there's three channels for people who support us on Patreon. There's the Castle Level Up, where you can share work in progress and get sort of a you know work with the brain trust of fellow leaners there to you know level up your work. There's Gentle Town, where it's okay to ask for a high five if you worked on something that you're really happy with, you want to share it and get a high five. And then finally, the Social Channel, where you can say like, hey, this is a movie I went and just saw recently. Hey, here's my cat. These are things happening in my life because I'm a human being after all. So that's the Lean Into Art Discord. And thanks to everybody who has been playing along there. It's been a lot of fun engaging with you guys there definitely thank you all right so hey. uh everybody had ample time to write down a few words about goals they might have for 2020 so why did they do that rob well think about um like the goals that you have in mind and think about that process of of uh well what what do you how do you feel about doing some actual planning to bring that about right on a scale of like one to 10, how important is goal planning to you? And how, like, how willing are you to do something about it? And if, if your answer is like, well, it's enticing, but am I really willing to do something about it? It's kind of a three or a four, hmm. you know, um, maybe you're just not there yet. And, um, or maybe there's, uh, yeah, Maybe it's that, maybe it's true for your, maybe that's true for your day job, but your side projects are all fired up or whatever. I mean, that, that could be or maybe the, like the energy's there, but just, there's no language surrounding it. Right. It's like, I remember when I first started making comics, like, look, I just want to be a comic book artist. Well, what does that mean? I don't know. I just want to make comics for a living. Okay. Well, how do you do it? 
Like, what, what kind of comics do you want to make, Jersey? I don't know. I just want to make cool comics, right? <laughs> I had the energy and the passion, but I just didn't have any of the language or the context or even the self-knowledge to know what I really wanted out of it right away. And, well, let's see. So what did that, did you, um, how did you get some of those experiences? Like, well, how did you build toward that? I mean, did you start, what, I mean, you clearly started wandering toward the goal. I did, but it was wandering because there was a lot of failed attempts. There's a lot of things where I was like, oh, I got like three weeks into this and this isn't what I wanted. I got six months into this and this isn't what I wanted. Uh, I spent a year on this and boy, do I feel like that was a lot of wasted effort because it's not what I wanted. You know, I had to like fail at a lot of things to like sort of like, because I didn't have, I didn't have somebody to thoughtfully ask me questions and make me defend myself. I had, I, I mean, Tom Root was great with like, as like a, a co collaborator on projects because he would call me on my BS when I was just like talking nonsense. He'd be like, well, okay, let's look at what, why you said what you just said, you know, but I only worked with him for a couple of years and most of the time I was really on my own trying to figure this out. So, um, but yeah, it was, it was a lot of, I wish I would have had a mentor back then. Um, that's one of the reasons I mentor now, but anyway. Oh yeah, me too, actually been uh yeah been volunteering as a mentor as well it's uh again it's a lot of fun to to get that opportunity but the uh which i actually podcasted about in uh during our sound off uh anyway so uh this is a topic you know goal planning all that kind of stuff and, and thinking through it uh both uh fresh um a fresh amount of effort that uh my wife kate shield stenzinger and i have put toward uh training and leveling up and coaching starting our coaching business all this kind of stuff and we we kind of had a um at realization midway through the year that well our goal planning process is going to come up we're doing this whole coaching thing whatnot uh you know I'm already posting some workshops. What it, you know, Kate's interested in doing that as well. So eh, let's work on a project together. So what we ended up coming up with is, is this this combination of a uh, a goal planning journal that is really our style and and uh, hopefully is a, is a uh, it's an inclusive, flexible mechanism that can you know work with tons of different approaches. Because one thing it's not is a calendar, right? So you, a lot of times you you hunt for journals. It's like 2020 calendar and all these different things that are really neat and whatnot. But like, this is uh, essentially a series of design exercises or activities that we call the where next journal. And the outcome of it is, uh, well, it's activities to design your goals and your story of your future. Because, okay, so you have, you have your goals. That's one thing that's neat. You maybe have deep thoughts all woven in your head about what you did and how you got there and you plotted things out. But then someone's like, uh, yeah, Hey Jersey. Um, so what are you working on that you're excited about or whatnot? And are, are you always ready to answer that question? <laughs> There's your answer. <laughs> okay. Uh, and so it, and asking yourself things like, well, what would, what would you make happen if you had all the resources you need? Um, yeah. And then, then it's basically, how would you describe it to others to get, to connect and relate and maybe even get their support depending on what you're working on? Mm. Um, yeah. So it's this combination of a bunch of things that, you know, through, through Kate's practices experience, through my practices experience that we've, we've taken our sort of informal things and refined them and put them into this uh, a workshop and a journal. And so we're working on like how we'll package that up. It's coming soon, very soon. Uh, but you know, we'll have probably have some version of it for uh, Skillshare, some version for Gumroad. And, uh, and it's very related if you're like, Hey, wait a minute. Thanks for teasing this. Come on. Um, we do actually have um, like a prototype early version of, of some of the activities on a page on our um, coaching site. So, which is shieldstenzinger.com. I had it up on the screen while you were, while you were you talking awesome. about it. Yeah. So that's so. what this is. So the journal tools page is sort of this early prototype that's still useful. Like Kate and I have used this dozens and dozens of times throughout the course of the year to, um, to look at our, our projects. Well, especially me where it's like, so you have, you know, if you have a variety of things in your plate, which things should float to the top and what, what really is in, in, in alignment, helping out your goals and all that kind of stuff. How do you describe and, and include others in the projects and whatnot? Well, then, you know, you have a project 
uh, concept uh, planner, and then the project status planner, where you can take a look at where it is and from a variety of perspectives that you'll probably, you know, find uh, if you've listened to a lot of the Lean Into Art podcast, a lot of similar thoughts that relate to like minimum viable product and holistic design from a variety of perspectives and whatnot, but it's sort of in a really simplified worksheet, right? And then one, the thing we use very frequently is the big goals and action planner, which is a combination of looking back and looking forward. Um, and those are sort of like made more robust and more facilitated and whatnot, both in the workbook, but then even more so in the uh, um, streamable, downloadable workshop where hmm. that's video, a video course to, to explore this. And we're really working on keeping that as, as concise as we can. We're shooting for 20 minutes, but might go a little over. Hmm. Brevity's hard. Brevity is super hard. Mm-hmm. It really is. I mean, it's going to be a packed 20 minutes, like, uh, you know, giving a little bit of, yeah, fun and anecdotes, but also the, you know, coaching and direction through getting through these different uh, exercises, which this is only scratching the surface. The, uh, the actual where next, uh, the where next journal is, is like, uh, what, 32 pages. Oh, wow. Very cool. I I will download them today and I will link to them in the show notes and I'll let you know what my experience is with them, Rob. Um, awesome. Yeah, cool. well, welcome feedback. The page that uh, Jersey is going to link to is, or we'll have in the show notes. Um, yeah, there is a feedback form uh, baked into it. Any Great. questions, reactions? Super welcome. Awesome. Well, I think we did a podcast, Rob. Thank you for this one. Uh, no, I think this is crazy. this is going to be super helpful to me as I'm navigating, like thinking about this year and the year ahead. This is the time to do it, as they say. Um, so, uh, having said that, we record this show every Thursday at noon Eastern time, uh, 11 a.m. Central. Stream it live on Twitch and then uh, at Twitch TV slash Lean Into Art, and then collect it as a podcast. Collect it as a podcast. Man, I'm tired today, and it sounds it sounds like I'm on a substance, and I'm not, except for caffeine, which is just hardly keeping me standing. Uh, we collect it as a podcast at leanintoart.com and patreon.com slash leanintoart. We'll be back with another show, and until then, I have been Jersey Drozd of leanintoart.com and Jersey Drozd on Instagram. And I've been Rob Stenzinger of leanintoart.com, and I'm Rob Stenzinger, places like Instagram. Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at leanintoart.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user leanintoart, and you can reach us via email at leanintoart at gmail.com. And remember, leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening.